Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's do a real example. We have two charges here, one that's 5 microcoulombs, one that's 10 microcoulombs, and we're trying to find the electric field at this location right here, one meter away from the 10 coulomb um, microcoulomb charge and two meters away from the 5 microcoulomb charge. There are some particular ways in which we can do this problem, but I think if you follow these steps, it makes it the easiest. The first step says to draw the vectors and then label the vectors, then find the magnitudes of the individual electric fields caused by each of the charges, then find the x and y components in case they're not all on the same line, that won't be necessary here, but when they're not on the same line we'll have to do step 3. Then we're going to add all the x and y components together separately, and then finally if you want to have it in the terms of magnitude and direction format, you also need to calculate the magnitude and direction of the final answer. So those are typically the five steps you want to follow in this order, and the problems will seem a whole lot easier. So let's go ahead and try that. So first we're going to draw the vectors, typically use a different color. So the electric field at this location due to this charge, well, that's going to be a lot weaker, not a stronger field, because this is a much closer charge and it's a much larger charge. So here, this would be the electric field from charge 1, and let's call it E sub 1 to indicate that this is the electric field vector of this charge right here. Now this is much closer, much bigger, so we'll have a much larger electric field caused by that charge, so let's call that E2. And then notice, those are the only two, because there's only two charges, and then the sum will be the vector sum of those two, so the total electric field will simply be the sum of the two like so, so E will simply be equal to the vector sum of E1 plus E2. And notice if you do this first, then you have a kind of a visual aspect of what you're trying to do that makes the rest of the problem a lot easier. Now next they tell us find the magnitudes of these individual vectors E1 and E2. So let's go ahead and do that. E1 is going to be equal to K times Q1, well yeah, Q1, divided by the distance between Q1 and the place where you want to find the electric field squared. So in this case, K, that would be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. We'll put the units here in this case. You can see how the units cancel out. Q1 would be 5 microcoulombs. That's 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And then we divide that by, uh, let's see here, R1, that would be the distance 2 meters squared. So 2 meters, and we have to square that. Notice the meter squares cancel out, one of the coulombs cancel out, and the newton doesn't cancel out. So the answer will be in newtons per coulomb. Now we need a calculator for that. So we have 9e to the 9th times 5e to the 6 minus, divided by 4, and we get 11,250. newtons per coulomb, which are the units of the electric field. Now we do the same for E2. So E2 is equal to K times Q2 divided by the distance to that charge squared. So again, we have 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons. Now I'm going to leave off the unit so you can just see that it's a lot cleaner. Your answer is going to be newtons per coulomb, so I'll just write newtons per coulomb. The charge here is going to be 10 microcoulombs divided by the distance squared which is 1 squared. In that case, let's see here, we have twice the charge, so double that, and we have 1 quarter the distance, so times 4, and that will be 90,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so now we've done step 2, we found the magnitudes, now we need to find the x and y components, but in this case, since everything is pointing in the x direction, we can go ahead and skip that step. Next step is add the x and y components together, so now we can actually do the vector sum. So this means that E1, or E, the total electric field, is equal to, and since they're all x components, I can simply say this is E1 plus E2, that is the magnitude of E1 plus the magnitude of E2, they're both pointing in the positive direction, so they're positive, and we put down the x unit vector indicating it is in the positive x direction. So this is equal to 11,250 newtons per coulomb 
plus 90,000 newtons per coulomb in the X direction. And so finally, the electric field at that location is equal to, add those together, that would be 101,250 newtons per coulomb in the X direction. Now, if you have an answer that's not purely in the X direction or purely in the Y direction, sometimes they may ask you, well, find the magnitude, because then you'll have expressed in terms of an X component and a Y component, and then you go through the process of finding the magnitude of the final vector and then the angle, the direction at which it points. But here we don't need to do that because the vector is simply pointing in the X direction. Magnitude of 101,250 newtons per coulomb in the positive X direction. And that's the answer.